Welcome back to phase number four of your Cisco CERT success path. We've laid the foundation in phase zero. We filled in all the gaps that so often get overlooked in our network studies by going through our Network Plus certification. Then, since everything routes and switches, whether we're in wireless or security or collaboration or data center, doesn't matter, everything routes and switches. So we made sure to get our CCNA and routing and switching certification. Then, because of the massive demand coming up in the industry for cybersecurity professionals and, and our need to communicate with those professionals, whether cybersecurity is our thing or not, we got a basic certification, a CCNA certification in CyberOps. Now, in phase number four, we're going to take a look at getting into the network programmability game. We want you to know the fundamentals of network programmability. I've been doing networking since the late 1980s. And in all that time, this is the biggest paradigm shift I've seen. It's the ability to have programs, applications, reach out to a network controller and reconfigure devices, switches, routers, firewalls, without us having to know the individual Cisco IOS commands. We, we give our intent. Cisco calls it intent-based networking. I have the intent of giving a certain application higher priority, as an example, as compared to another application with lower priority. I can communicate my intent through some sort of a program or an application, and that can be translated out to the network devices. And when I was studying this, I developed what I call the Network Programmability Framework. The bottom line is we want to configure a network device. And in the Cisco world, we've got three primary ways of doing that. We could use a controller or we could communicate directly to a device. The APIC controller, that's what we typically see in data center environments. The APIC EM controller, that's what we typically see in enterprise environments. And even without a controller, we can write programs that communicate directly to a device via Telnet, Secure Shell, and there are lots of other options you see on screen. There's lots of terminology involved in network programmability. And I thought to introduce you to this concept, I would take a video from my Fundamentals of Network Programmability training series and share that with you in this video. And that training video that we're about to jump to in a second, that's going to cover the fundamentals of SDN, Software Defined Networking. You'll understand the basic operation. Now, by the way, Cisco does some things differently with their controllers as compared to what a lot of vendors do. So when we talk about the control plane in just a few moments, realize that Cisco leaves the control plane in the devices. The control plane does not go live on the controllers. And that's something else we talk about later on in the fundamentals of network programmability. But I thought this video would give you a great overview of SDN and help you understand this big paradigm shift happening in the industry. And as always, throughout this series on your Cisco CERT success path, I always like to give you a big discount on something that can help move you towards that particular phase. So after this video that we're about to jump to, be sure to stick around because I want to give you a 50% discount off of my Fundamentals of Network Programmability video training series. And I want to throw in three bonuses for you for going through this training with me. But for now, let's jump out to a video that comes from my training series where you'll learn about the fundamentals of software-defined networking. As we get into our discussion of network programmability, there's a couple of terms we want to start out with. I don't want us to get these terms confused. One is DevOps and the other is SDN. First of all, DevOps. That comes from combining software development with information technology operations. You see, instead of having software developers operating in their own silo and then having information technology operations professionals working in their own silo, what we do with DevOps is realize that they can complement one another. We can come together and have a collection of procedures where software developers can work in tandem with the IT staff to help automate network changes and software deployment. That's the idea behind DevOps. Now, SDN, Software Defined Networking, that's a collection of tools that can be used for DevOps. It allows an entire network, for example, to be managed as one entity rather than going to individual device after individual device and managing each device independently. We can do that with SDN. And in this video, I want you to get a good sense for what SDN does. And I want you to see where programming comes into it. This is a course on network programmability. And I want you to start to, to glimpse the power of programming when it comes to managing a network. 
First, let's consider a traditional network like this. We've got a couple of routers, we've got a switch, and architecturally inside of each of these devices we have different planes of operation. We have, for example, the data plane. This architectural plane is in charge of forwarding the packets and the frames at the appropriate egress or the appropriate outgoing port or the outgoing interface. On a router, the data plane will be responsible, for example, for taking a look at an IP packet and saying, hmm, this is destined for this particular network address. Let me check my IP routing table to see how I get to this network. Oh, it looks like I go at gigabit one slash zero. Great, I'll forward the packet out of that interface. Or on a switch, we might take a look at a frame and say, this frame has a particular destination MAC address. Let me look at my CAM table. That's the table that gives us our MAC address to port mappings. And let's figure out to which egress port we need to send this frame based on its destination MAC address. Those are the types of things that happen at the data plane. Now up at the control plane, this is where we might have our protocols operating. How did the CAM table get populated? How did the IP routing table get populated? Those types of operations happen up at the control plane. So for example, on a router we might have routing protocols like OSPF or EIGRP running at the control plane. On a switch, we might have spanning tree protocol, STP, running at the control plane. And then finally, up at the top, we've got the management plane. This plane is in charge of how we administratively attach to the device. We could tell that into the device. Uh, Cisco sort of frowns on that these days. They much prefer that we use SSH, Secure Shell, to connect in because it's a lot more secure than Telnet. But we've got these different planes of operation. And traditionally, if I want to manage a network like this, I would go to the router, enter some commands from the command line interface of the CLI, go to the switch, enter some commands, go to the other router and enter some commands. But in today's environment where we've got really dynamic and elastic demands, that's not very efficient. For example, let's say that I've got a data center and we're going to have some big sale running, maybe on Black Friday, and we're anticipating this flood of requests coming into the e-commerce site. Well, we might need to spin up some additional virtual machines. And if we do that, well, maybe we need to reconfigure our load balancer to load balance across more servers that just got spun up. Maybe we need to set some quality of service settings. We might have to do that just temporarily, and then after the Black Friday sale is over, then we go back to normal. That's a lot of work to do manually. So wouldn't it be great, and this is the promise, this is the vision of SDN, wouldn't it be great if I could somehow manage the network as an entity rather than managing individual devices? What we have right now, traditionally, is something called a distributed control plane. Because the control planes where we run the protocols like STP or OSPF or EIGRP, the control planes live in the devices themselves. Now let's define some terms. What we have right now is called a distributed control plane because the control plane is distributed, but what if we did this? What if we added a computer to the network and we had some software running on this computer and we called this an SDN controller? We ran some SDN software on this device. What we could do now is take those control planes from the different devices and consolidate them on the SDN controller, the software-defined networking controller. Now we could have this SDN controller manage all of these routing protocols and STP and everything else that happens at the control plane and it could keep track of everything happening in the entire network and it could simply push changes down to the individual device and it could request information from individual devices so it knows what's happening, it can monitor the network. The way it does this, the type of communication that goes on between an SDN controller and one of these end devices, it's called an API, an Application Programming Interface. And specifically, when we're talking about going from an SDN controller down to the network device, this is a southbound API or a southbound interface. The reason we say it's southbound is we typically draw an SDN network out like this where the, the SDN controller is in the middle and below the SDN controller we've got the network devices. And if you think of a compass, what's at the bottom of the compass? It's south. So since these devices live south of the SDN controller, we say that we communicate with them using southbound interfaces, which are often abbreviated as SBIs. So an SBI, that's a southbound interface. And what we have now, because the control planes are no longer distributed across our devices, we now have something called a centralized control plane. All of the control planes from all of my devices are now centralized inside of the SDN controller. And you might be wondering what specific software is running on this computer that we call an SDN controller. 
Well, probably the, the most popular SDN controller out there today is something called Open Daylight. And Open Daylight has a protocol called Open Flow that it can use as its SBI, as its southbound interface. And we can use Open Flow to communicate between the SDN controller and devices that support Open Flow. Not every device out there speaks Open Flow, but some do. And we can use Open Flow to communicate and control and monitor those devices. Now, our focus in this course is primarily going to be what happens north of the SDN controller. We're interested in writing programs to communicate with the SDN controller. So just like we had southbound interfaces to communicate below the controller, you guessed it, we've got northbound interfaces that communicate from the controller north up to applications. We call those an NBI or northbound interface. And here, the type of APIs that we're using, they're called REST APIs, R-E-S-T, which stands for Representational State Transfer, or some people call them RESTful APIs. And what's going on here is the application can send an HTTP verb, like when you're loading a web page, if you ever were to do a packet capture and take a look at what HTTP is actually saying in the background as you're retrieving a web page or you're sending something to a website, it's going to use a verb like get to get some information from the controller, or it will use a post command to send some information to the controller. We're using these HTTP or HTTPS verbs to send commands from our application down to the controller to tell the controller to do a certain thing on the network. And what Cisco says this does for us is add a layer of abstraction. Cisco says that by doing this, we can say what we want to happen in the network. We want to provision quality of service optimized for Cisco IP phones, for example. We could say that within our application without having to know all the individual commands that have to be typed in the router. We don't have to know MQC on the router and how low latency queuing works and how to set up explicit congestion notification. No, we just say what we want to do in the application. And then the application sends the command down to the SDN controller, which converts what it receives from the application into corresponding commands that it can send out for example, using OpenFlow, down to the end devices. This is going to make it much, much easier for network professionals to manage an entire network. We're going to be able to do it much faster. It's going to be less expensive because it's not going to take near as long. And we're going to be able to get better performance. We're going to be able to monitor what's happening. And like we said, this is going to be the main focus of this course. We want to take a look at these applications that we're running. And an application could be, and often is, a Python program. We're going to have an entire module in this course just on Python programming. And then we're going to see how we can use a Python program to send commands to an SDN controller. And when we send these commands, we might be sending certain configuration commands, or maybe we're requesting some configuration information. The data needs to be encoded in a certain way. And a couple of the common data encoding formats that we're going to be using are JSON, J-S-O-N, and XML. Extensible Markup Language. Now, JSON, that stands for JavaScript Object Notation. And you'll hear a couple of different pronunciations in the industry. Some people will call this JSON, like somebody's name is Jason. Some people say J, like the individual letter, and then they say S-O-N is a separate word. They say JSON. That's typically what I say, but you'll hear both out there. Now, XML, that stands for Extensible Markup Language. And later in this module, we're going to have a video just on JSON formatting, and we'll have another video just on XML formatting. But I just want you to know for now that these are ways that we can structure, that we can format the information that we're using to communicate with the SDN controller. And also, since we're talking about network programmability in general and not specifically SDN in this course, I want you to realize that we can do network programmability without an SDN controller. That's right. We could write applications. We could write, and we will. We'll write in this course, we'll write Python programs that can communicate directly with Cisco routers and switches, or, or other devices for that matter. So we don't have to have an SDN controller in the mix. But the SDN controller, it does add that layer of abstraction. It's going to give us a lot more power, a lot more scalability. But if I wanted to manage maybe a dozen devices... I could do that by having a collection of programs that I run for my computer. I could have these Python programs, or, or maybe I get some Python programs or modules to make up a Python program from uh, someone's GitHub. We'll have a video on that as well. And I could manage these devices. So in the SDN model, network programmability, that's really going to shine when we have applications that speak down to the SDN controller. But again, 
we could communicate directly with the devices without even having an SDN controller. All right, I hope you enjoyed that video from uh, the Fundamentals of Network Programmability video training series. And if you'd like to get the entire series, I want to give you a big discount. Here, by the way, are the topics covered in that training series. These are the names of the different videos, not including the intros and summaries and extra things like that. But these are the content videos you'll get in that series. You'll learn Python programming. You'll learn how to write a program to talk to an APIC controller, to talk to an APIC EM controller, to talk directly to a network device. And as you can see on screen, there's a lot more than that. And if you go to my website right now to purchase this, you'll see that it's $197. But since you're going through this training series, I want to give you a pretty massive discount. I want to give you 50% off where you only pay $98.50. To get that discount, go to this special link. Go to kwtrain.com slash sdn50. That's kwtrain.com slash sdn50. And I also want to give you some bonuses to go along with your 50% discount. Bonus number one is going to be three recordings. I've got this private group called Diver Down Routing and Switching, and I get together with this group on an online session once a month, and we do some training in routing and switching, and people pay a monthly fee to belong to that group. They get to ask their questions live. At the time of this recording, we've reached capacity, so it's not open to new members right now. We occasionally open it up when some new slots open up, but for now, it's probably closed. But I want to give you as a bonus the first three sessions from that membership. So those are three approximately one hour long training segments. Then I want to give you 50 MP3 so you can listen on the go to my podcast, which is called The Broadcast Storm which helps you with not just technical information, but also with your time management for advancing in your career, writing your resume, excelling in an IT interview, lots of skills like that. And since the fundamentals of network programmability relies so heavily on the DevNet sandbox where we can get free access to gear like the APIC and the APIC EM controllers, we can just get to those for free. We reserve the time slot and then we go use it on the DevNet sandbox. I thought I would give you some other things to play with out in that sandbox. I've got another video course that sells for $49 called the DevNet Sandbox Collaboration Labs, where you can get some experience in the DevNet Sandbox with some collaboration gear. I'll walk you through several examples in that series. And I want to throw that course in for free as well with your purchase of the Fundamentals of Network Programmability. Again, to get this 50% discount and your three bonuses, you need to go to kwtrain.com slash sdn50. Hope you enjoyed this phase of your Cisco Cert Success Path, and we'll see you back in the next video for phase number five.